My name is Matt Quinn and welcome to this episode of Dark Skies. So today I'm going to talk to you guys about star trackers. Probably one of the most common questions that I get about night sky photography is how do I get these crazy long exposures without seeing trails in the stars in the night sky? And the answer is quite simple. I just use this fandangled fancy device called a star tracker. It's essentially a, just a glorified egg timer. It's uh, you know, the device you put your camera on and it turns ever so slowly. So today I wanna to talk to you guys all about how to use one of these things, how to set it up and so on. So let's get to it. All right, so this is my tracker here and you'll also need a, just a standard tripod and I use a ball head on my tripod. So you just need this as well. So this is the unit here. This is the tracker. And like I said, is this a glorified egg timer? It's got a motor inside and this thing just kind of turns ever so slowly. Um, and it, I love this one just because it's so small. Um, a lot of these things are absolutely huge. They're made for like massive telescopes and stuff, but they make this smaller unit um, for people like me who like to use it for just, you know, for their camera and, and taking night sky photos. And this is the Skywatcher Star Adventurer. Um, highly recommend it, love this thing. I used to have a really big one and it just was just so cumbersome to bring around with me. So this is the unit here and it comes with this thing which is called the wedge. This thing is super important because this is what you use to polar align um, your tracker and polar alignment I'll get into in a bit, but this, is thing, this thing's essential. So how it starts is I take my ball head off my tripod just like that and I'll put the wedge on so it's got the, the tripod mount right there just put that on like that screw it on bam looks like that this star tracker unit has a little cover here which I'll talk about in a second but you just pop that cover off and it reveals the polar scope you slide this thing in here Bam, tighten this bolt to give it a snug fit. It comes with this thing when this is, I've modified this slightly. It had this other piece on it. I just took it off. Um, and this part just slides in here. Just keep in mind that there's, a, there's the polar scope um, uh, glass there. So just don't cover that up. Make sure it's you know visible. You can look through all the way. And then the next part is I'll grab my ball head that I took off earlier and I'll put that part on right here. You may have to tighten up your bolt here. Um, this is what keeps it from rotating. And then yeah, I have my ball head here and that's essentially it. I'll put my camera on there and we're good to go. Um, sometimes if I'm shooting and I'm shooting with my 100 to 400 millimeter lens, I'll uh, attach this thing, which is a counterweight. So I'll put this, it just screws in on this side right here and it'll balance the camera and I can slide this thing up and down like that to get it in perfect balance. This is what I can do here too. You can loosen this part, which will swing it around 
and then you can test your balance. So if I were to put this in here, it would go whoa, like that, right? But if I had a really heavy camera here, you know, it would kind of, it should just not move at all. It should be in perfect balance. So that is how we set up the Star Tracker. So the next I'm gonna go through kind of like the anatomy of this thing and talk to you guys about some of the knobs and stuff that you see. And uh, yeah, we'll go from there. Okay, so I'm just gonna run you through some of the anatomy here. From the bottom of the top, these bolts here will allow you to swivel the tracker left and right. And this is essential for polar alignment. Additionally, there's this knob here in the back, which will tilt it this way. Again, both used for polar alignment. Next, we have the polar scope, which is what we use to polar align. So all four of these things all about polar alignment. Then on top, we have this knob here, which basically just turns your tracker on and off. I use this, you know, there's a, a bunch of modes. I really only use the star tracker mode, which is this little star here, and then I'll turn it off usually. Um, a lot of cases when uh, I'm doing like a landscape night sky photography Im uh, image, I'll do a shot of the sky where I'll turn the tracker on, I'll take an image, and then I'll turn the tracker off, maybe pan down ever so slightly to get the foreground, and then take another image, the exact same settings. And then on top, this just kind of stays the same. And then for my camera, this is where I'll just kind of, you know, acquire whatever image I'm, I'm looking for. And I can move it around, I can swivel like this, I can go direct into the sky if I want to. This is the nice part about having a ball head on your tracker, is that you can, you know, basically compose your image like you would on a tripod. But you know when you take pictures of the stars that the image is going to be perfectly tracked. So that's essentially the anatomy and next I'm going to run through polar alignment. Okay so once you're all set up you're going to want to start to polar align. The first step in polar alignment is getting uh, some way of illuminating the polar scope because when you're out there uh, it's dark and you can't see the little reticle when you look through the polar scope. You can see the stars and stuff but you can't see that circle that you need to align to um, without some sort of illumination. Uh, Sky, Sky Watcher included this little illuminator, which is, to me, it's it's not that handy because it, it requires you to mount it to the red part down there using these little things. But uh, a lot of times when, you know, I align that way and then I, you know, mount my camera, I would fall out of alignment. And then I, I can't then attach it, you know, to this to align again. So what I've done is I've just kind of used some Velcro tape and I've shaved off some of the little notches here. And I put this alignment into this, this illuminator right here. Uh, and this will illuminate just ever so slightly um, the polar scope so I can see the reticle at the same time as the stars. And this is really handy because, you know, the last thing you want to be doing is, is uh, holding up your headlamp or something like that with one hand and then turning these knobs with the other hand. It can be really super annoying. You're going to get frustrated. Um, I really don't know why Skywatcher didn't put an illuminator right in there, included this kind of janky little thing. Um, I don't know. If I really hope they release another one that has a built-in illuminator. Uh, it would just save so much time. But once you have your illuminator, uh, your polar scope illuminated with this thing or, or some other means, you can then move on to actually polar aligning it by adjusting these knobs and getting Polaris centered in the reticle. Okay, so polar alignment. This is probably the most complicated part of the whole process. And for this thing to work really well and track the stars so they're pinpoint uh, and during a long exposure, this thing has to be lined up with the Earth's axis. I know that sounds kind of complicated, but there's a really easy way to do this. So this is why we have this scope here. Um, and we have this really awesome anchor in the night sky called the North Star. At least that's what we do in the north. I'm not sure. I know there's something similar in the south, but I'm not sure what the name of it is. Um, but in the, in the north, we have this thing called Polaris, a star called Polaris. And that is our North Star. And we have to align this tracker with that star. And that's what we have this for and these knobs for. So how it works is I'll, you know, loosely line up Polaris in the night sky with this polar scope and then I'll fine tune adjust, you know, moving that star within the reticle to get it to exactly where I want it to be. Now there's a couple things in there I should explain further. The first thing is how do, how do I find the North Star? And the second thing is how do I know where I want it to be in this reticle? So the first thing is the North Star. 
The easiest way to find the North Star is to look for the Big Dipper. It's this constellation in the night sky that looks like a giant spoon. And at the end of the spoon, there's two stars, really, really bright stars. And those bright stars will draw a line almost directly to Polaris. And that's the easiest way to find it. If you can't find it that way, I would suggest using an app called Sky Guide. And it's basically this like augmented reality app that you can move around the sky and you can just search for Polaris and it, it will kind of highlight it and show you where it is and so you can find it. And from there, you could probably do the, you know, the, the Big Dipper thing and, and get it perfectly aligned in there. So once you have it kind of, you can see Polaris in your reticle, that's when we move on to the next step. Inside this polar scope, there's a little circle reticle and you're gonna to wanna to put Polaris on a specific spot on that reticle. And there's another app you can use called Polar Align. There's a whole bunch of these apps, but it essentially tell, it will detect where you are in the world and what day it is, and it will tell you exactly where to put Polaris on that circle to be perfectly aligned. It's, it's such a simple process, um, but it does take some practice. And once you kind of see the picture on the app, you'll get in a sense of what the reticle looks like inside of this, and you kind of like pair those two up. So probably the most complicated part of this whole process and it will may take some practice but if you're gonna be shooting with a really wide angle lens it doesn't need to be super super perfect but if you're gonna be shooting with a you know a longer focal length like 100 millimeters or 400 millimeters your polar alignment is gonna to have to be bang on so the more you practice the better you'll get and the easier it'll be when you're out there in the field All right, so a couple final tips for you guys now that we're all set up uh, when you're out shooting in the field is, you know, for me, I always like to get my composition sorted out before I get all this gear out, before I align and do all that stuff. Because once we're aligned, we're really anchored in our position. Um, you know, if we move, then we're gonna have to realign again. So get your composition all set up and sorted out before you get all this gear out and set up. Uh, the other thing is when you're moving around your camera, be, be careful to not like kick the tripod or, you know, really muscle the camera around because you're going to throw it out of alignment. And the last thing is, you know, when you're, when you start shooting, make sure you always check the camera and check the images to make sure that you are perfectly aligned because it might take a few shots to get that fine tune adjustment and get those pinpoint stars and all that beautiful detail you're looking for. So that's it. We're done. If I did miss something, please feel free to leave a comment below. I'll happily answer any questions you guys have on these things uh, that I know. And uh, yeah, I really hope you guys appreciated it and enjoyed this tutorial. Um, you know, if you did, please click that like button below. I know it really helps, you know, get these videos out to all the other folks that, you know, want to learn this stuff. So really appreciate that. And yeah, we'll see you guys in the next one. Uh, I'm going to go out here and enjoy some Algonquin weather. As you could probably tell, I'm like, itching myself like crazy. The bugs here are mental. I've never experienced bugs like I have uh, in the past 24 hours, but uh, needless to say it's June in Algonquin. There's going to be bugs. Regardless, I'm going to go out there. I'm going to have some fun anyways. Um, this is supposed to be clear again tonight, so hopefully I can get out and capture some beautiful shots of the stars as well as just enjoy the beautiful scenery that is here in Algonquin. Cool. We'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks.